Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. This is the start of a new series on ink pads. Quite a few of you have requested I do some videos on which ink pads to choose for which techniques. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've gathered here all my different types of ink pad. I've got Catherine Polar inks, Distress Oxides, Ranger Archival inks, Memento Tuxedo Black ink, Versamark Watermark Stamp Pad and Stays On Jet Black ink. And over this series, we'll look at each of these different ink pads and do some card making using them for the techniques that they are best suited to. Don't worry if you haven't got these particular ink pads. I'm sure that the ink pads that you have or the ones you're thinking of buying will be similar in some way to one of these. I'd highly recommend checking out the manufacturer's websites and or YouTube channels for each of the inks that you own because there will be information there about what they are best suited to. Sometimes manufacturers will helpfully put information on the back of their ink pads as well as on their websites. For example, this one, this Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad says, when dry, stamped impressions are water resistant. Dries on all paper surfaces, including coated and textured papers. What it doesn't say on this one is that these are good for using with alcohol markers. You can stamp with Memento Tuxedo Black and colour your images with alcohol markers once the ink is dry. So do go and check out the manufacturers, websites and YouTube channels for your specific inks to get the real lowdown on those. So in today's video, I'd like to focus on probably my favourite inks, Distress Oxides. I'm not sponsored, by the way. None of these videos in this series are sponsored. These are all ink pads I've bought with my own money. And as you can see, these are well loved. I bought these, I think it might have been 2018. So when they roughly first came out, they haven't been out long when I got some. I previously had Distress Inks, which are dye-based ink pads. But as soon as I started using Distress Oxides, I really abandoned my Distress Inks and I actually ended up giving my Distress Inks away. These are the first colours that I bought in Distress Oxides. I wanted a rainbow, so I went for a pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, an indigo and a violet. And these were all I needed for quite a long time. But over the last few years, I've gradually collected more and more. I eventually got a pastel rainbow and then I've just been grabbing colours as I see them and like them. Distress Oxides have a felt pad, a nice big felt pad inside. So they're quite robust. It's really hard to damage a felt based ink pad compared to a foam based ink pad. And these are a mixture of dye ink and pigment ink. Dye inks tend to be translucent, so you can see through them and they stain the paper. So for an example of a dye ink would be Catherine Pooler or Ranger Archival. Pigment inks tend to be opaque, so they're not see-through and they sit on top of the paper. And Distress Oxides have both of those in them. So they're a bit staining, but they also sit on top. They have a bit of a chalky finish to them sometimes, not all the time I've found. Different colours have a different chalky look to them, but they don't contain any chalk. They're just dye, pigment and whatever solvent is used. The solvent is water-based, so they do react with water, which is where you get the name oxide. Now, they're not chemically oxidising. They give you an oxidisation look. So when you drip water onto, say, a blended panel of oxide and dab it off, it will pick up some of the colour and leave a lighter colour. So it looks maybe like it's oxidised, but it's not real oxidisation. It's just a picking up of colour. You can use these on most porous papers. You can use them on light paper and dark coloured paper, and they will still show up because of that opaque nature to them on the dark paper. If when you've finished your project, you don't want them to react with water any further or you're halfway through a project and you want to seal them so they don't react with what you put on the top, you can get something called a distress glaze, which is a bit like Vaseline and you sort of smear it over and it will stop them reacting with water. It puts a waterproof layer on the top. 
So for the rest of this video, I'm going to look at getting some Distress Oxide colour down onto a piece of paper. So doing things like blending, swiping and smushing. There are lots of tools you can use to blend ink onto your paper. When I'm blending large areas, I like to use these brushes. I keep one brush for each colour family. So I've got one for all my oranges, one for all my pinks, one for all my blues, etc, etc. And I have one set of all of those for the oxides and another set for my Catherine Pula inks, which are also blendable onto paper. And I have two sets because the inks are different formulations. Catherine Pula is just a dye based ink and the Distress Oxides are ink and pigment. So I don't want to contaminate my Catherine Pula inks with the pigment from the Distress Oxides. You can also use foam or sponge blenders. This is a flat one. So you get a handle and you can change out the sponge, the foam. If you want to move between colours, you can rinse these under the tap. There are also dome shaped sponge blenders and these are supposed to give you a bit more control and less uneven blending. I honestly don't find much difference between the two. For more accurate or detail blending or paint application, you can get these small brush blenders which blend the colour on. Or you can use these finger daubers or finger sponges. They have a little plastic thing that you stick your finger in and then you can add ink. I have one of these for each of my Distress Oxide colours. So let's do some basic blending. So I've got one lipstick here and I just pick it up on my brush, give it a good brush and then I can blend my ink onto my paper. I start off of the paper and then come on generally like that and that way you don't get any harsh lines. I do apply quite a lot of downward pressure as I swirl my brush. That helps the ink go on and I never wash these brushes. I know some people do but I think having the ink get up all into the bristles here can really help with the application of ink. If you want to change between pinks, say, all I do is give it a good rub on a microfiber cloth or a paper towel and then move on to another pink. And that usually is enough to allow me to switch between colors. So I'll just show you what it's like with a sponge domed blender. Again, get lots on your applicator and then come in from the side again spinning with some downward pressure and you'll get a nice blend. I personally find it easier and less hard work on my wrist here to use the brush. To get the two colours to blend nicely in the middle just come in from either side working over that middle area so you can do one colour and then get your brush or whatever applicator you're using and then come in from the other side blending over the middle. I found with Distress Oxides I can get a good blend on most types of paper. They're really well formulated for blending. With say the Catherine Polar inks, I find I need to use a paper that has had some kind of treatment on it, like a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper. They are designed to take wet media and to stop them kind of soaking in too quickly. So I find with something like a dye based ink, the Catherine Polar inks, I use a mixed media or watercolour paper for blending. So there are other ways of applying ink to your paper. If I get some ink from my ink pad on my mat here, I can take a damp baby wipe and pick up the ink so it's on the baby wipe and then I can use that to blend. It's a different kind of blending, a different kind of application. 
I wouldn't put the baby wipe directly on the ink pad because that's got some kind of formulation on it and I don't know how that would react with your ink on there and I don't want to wreck my ink pad. So you can use a damp baby wipe to add colour and it just gives you a different effect. Do the same thing again, put some ink on my mat and I've got a dry paper towel here so I can pick that up and again I can use that and that will give me ever such a subtle application because some of the ink will have soaked into the tissue. I've just got some residual ink on there. So if I wanted a really light application of ink, I can even go into the ink pad because this is just dry paper towel. I can go in and pick up ink and add it very lightly with a dry paper towel. In a similar vein, I can get a clean, dry microfiber cloth. This gives a different effect again. You can just keep going and adding layer after layer. You can get another bit of the cloth and pick up some dried marigold and mix that in. Go back in with my worn lipstick, just keep layering them up. Another thing you can use from around a home is cotton wool. So you can pick it up on a dry cotton wool ball or pad and you can use that to apply your ink. You could use a cotton bud or a q-tip to pick up some colour for accurate colour application. So before you rush out and buy every different blending applicator piece of equipment, have a look around your home and see what you can find that might do the job for you. But I definitely recommend brushes and for accurate more accurate blending i generally nowadays reach for my finger daubers so these are the two that i use most often another way to use ink pads to add color to your paper is called director paper or swiping and you just take your ink pad and press it down and drag it over your paper so it's going to be a fairly streaky application at least until you've built up some layers the harder you press down with these the more ink you're going to get transferred you could work with the streaks and create some kind of crisscross pattern sometimes I do this if I want to add a lot of ink quickly and then I'll bring in my brush blender and give it a good blend to smooth everything out. So I might do something like this, get the ink on and then brush, 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 and then let it smooth out. One of my favorite ways to add color using Distress Oxides is to smash. So I'm gonna put some tumbled glass down there on my mat like that. I'm gonna spritz it with water so it turns into a paint. And then I'm gonna pick it up with my smusher and smush it on. There is a instructional video on how to make a smusher, so do check that out. So that first layer is dry, and I can now smush on top of that layer. So I've got bundled sage again, adding some water, and this time I'm gonna use my bubble wrap smusher. As I say, check out the videos that are linked in the video description about how to use and make a smusher. So I can dry that with my hairdryer or I can leave that to dry. I can even add more layers on top if I want. The traditional smushing technique involves smushing your ink pad or ink pads down onto the glass mat, trying not to contaminate the ink pads with each other, spraying them with water and then smushing your paper down into them like that. So you can pick it up or drag it. You can then dry that layer and then do another layer on top. 
add a bit more water and then we'll do a second layer. The trick with this is to choose colours that aren't going to mix and make mud, unless of course that's what you want. So here we have the two smush backgrounds. The one with the smushes is a bit more controlled, a bit more defined, and the one with smushing straight onto the mat is a bit more diffuse, a bit less defined. So depending on what look you want, use the appropriate tool. And before we make a card, I've got one more ink application technique to share with you, and that is simple spattering or splattering. So you can, again, apply ink to your mat, add some water to turn it into a paint, get a paintbrush, pick it up, give it a good stir so it's all mixed up well, pick it up, it doesn't want to be dripping wet, just enough so that when you tap it, some drips come off. So something like this, this is picked raspberry, which I know will work with the worn lipstick and dried marigold on here. If you don't want to smush your ink pads down, you can use the re-inkers. So these are ink that you use to top up your ink pad. You've got to give them a good shake. So you top up your ink pad when they start to dry out and the ink is used up. But you can also just add a drop or two into a palette, onto a mat, and use it like a paint. You can add water to it and spatter it, paint it, do whatever you want with it, smush with it. And I'm not going to waste that, I'm going to do some more smushing with it. One thing to remember with the smushing is that the card you use is quite important. So if you use a really absorbent card that's going to suck the colour and the liquid right in, you're going to get much more defined, smushy shapes. If you use something like watercolour or mixed media paper that lets the ink soaking a, a bit slower, then you might get some more diffuse, smushed shapes. So play with whatever papers you've got and whatever techniques you want to see the kind of effects you can get. Right, let's make a card. To get going, I've used this set of circle heart nesting dies, not as a heart nesting die, but as one circle with a wibbly wobbly edge. And I've cut that from there. So I've got an aperture now, but it's got an interesting edge to it, which I rather like. And my thinking is to place this piece here, the first piece we blended behind the aperture. I think I must have splashed a little bit of water on it because it's got a little imperfection there, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to cut it down a bit just so I can hide it behind that. I'm going to separate the front panel from the coloured panel using foam strips. And I find when going around a circle shape, the easiest thing to do is to take the release paper off and then you can easily curve the foam. And then so I get the foam tape in exactly the right place, I'll put it on here as well. Next, I'm going to use this die to cut out lots of flowers from my pinky and orange pieces of paper. You'll often see me use this die and I make no apologies for that because I think it's just a fabulous little die for cutting out lots of flowers in one go. Not only that, it fits through my Gemini Mini so it's really convenient to use. So I've sorted my flowers out into size order and now I'm going to make some double layer flowers. So I'm going to get all my big ones, add a spot of glue to the middle of each one, doesn't have to be a big spot. And then get the next size flower down and add it on top and you can mix and match your colours.
So that's my big flowers down. I can put those over there to dry. Next, I can get my next size flowers down. Instead of putting a spot of glue in the middle of each one, because that gets a bit tricky with the smaller flowers, I just put a spot of glue on my mat, dip the bottom of the smaller flower in and stick that on top. And then I have my flowers. It's actually quite a quick process to do this. If you sort them out into size order, it really is straightforward. So here we have a lovely big pile of flowers. I haven't put any flower centers in yet because I'll do that at the end when I know where they're going on my card. So now what I'm gonna do is take my flowers, give them a bit of shape by pushing down on the middle and flicking the petals up, dip them in glue and place them around and about a bit. I like to start with the biggest shapes first and then come in with the smaller shapes. I'm probably going to have far more flowers than I need for this particular card, but that's all right. I can make lots of other cards with these. In fact, if you stick around to the end of the video, I will put in some photos of the other cards that I've made with these flowers. On some of the flowers, I'm going to put a bit of foam tape so that they reach down to the bottom of the aperture. Right, I think that is enough in the flower department for this card. For my sentiment, I'm gonna use this Sending Sunshine to brighten your day because I think it snuggles really nicely in there. And I will put it on foam tape so it's raised up to the same level as the card front. Now I think I'm ready for some flower centre, so I'm going to use this Pale Gold Nouveau Crystal Drops. You could use enamel dots for this, or you could cut little circles with a die. And I'm going to put a dot in each flower centre, each visible flower centre. So I think this card might be finished, but I'm going to try cutting some greeny, bluey leaves and seeing if that adds a little something to the card. I've cut some leaves. That particular cluster of dyes has lots of different styles of leaf, so I've just selected some that are similar to each other. We just tuck them in a few places and the green just adds a little bit of contrast a different color helps the pink pop you can use them to help the flowers look a bit separate from one another you don't need loads and loads and loads just a few here and there Right, I think that will do. That's this card finished and the end of the first video in this series. Come back tomorrow for video number two in which we will be looking at lifting inks. So today we blended and smushed and swiped ink onto paper. Tomorrow we'll be looking at lifting ink off of paper. So if you've enjoyed today's video, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know what techniques you're going to play with in the comments. Subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for the next video in the series. Bye for now.